sitting between Michael Moore and Alex Gibney. How good does it get? <laughs> and being in a room with Tabita and Orlando, Elizabeth, Jimmy, and seeing you all, it's like looking at the United Nations of the documentary film world. And I'm just your German ambassador, <laughs> representative of the free world. I was a little sad in between, realizing that I was way past the mid-career awards. <laughs> <laughs> Happens. And I was amazed that you got all these films together. Jeremy, wherever you are, thank you. Thank you. Lifetime achievement. Maybe that's why I'm getting more confused. As the older I get, the more confused I, I am. Not in general, don't, don't get me wrong, but about the difference between fiction and nonfiction. If I remember really, what I liked about fictional films was. all the unforeseen things that could happen. I was waiting for them. I was waiting for the cracks that would open to let some reality in. And actually, if I look at my fictional films, they're all really reality-driven and place-driven. And then I see these documentaries, and I realize I always try to find some element of fiction. Buena Vista Social Club is a fairy tale, let's face it. I just happened to be there. Also, our film together, Alex, Soul of a Man. Yeah, we started in outer space. We needed to establish a fiction to hold the story of these three bluesmen, these underrated bluesmen together. I'm happy that I'm here to show tonight Pope Francis, a man of his word, because it is strangely more than a movie to me. It dawned on me while we were making it, it took almost five years, it dawned on me because the world had changed in these five years. And when I took on the job, it was a different world, and yes, making a film with Pope Francis would be fantastic. And then, slowly, the world changed, and all of a sudden, the man in front of my camera was a moral compass for the world because all the other authorities had disappeared. And politics were a swamp of amorality all over the world. In Europe, just as well as in America, China, Russia, wherever, you looked and out of a sudden I realized, boy, there is a little more responsibility on this movie than I could, I really intended to shoulder. I had sleepless nights because these few people who knew about the film at the Vatican, basically the Vatican didn't know that we were making the film, we, sh we shot it under the radar. There was just a handful of people they actually knew we were making a movie. And these handful of people had promised me they would keep out of the film, which was great. I mean, you know that. As documentary filmmakers, if you have a free hand and if you can just dream it up and do whatever you want, it's fantastic. But in this case, I got very scared because I had nobody to give me notes. <laughs> the Vatican, not a single note. Never ever, they kept their word, they never interfered, which was a drag. <laughs> I remember Alex did interfere a few times and God bless you for doing it. 
well, sometimes it was because we ran out of money, but <laughs> if, you, if you can just do whatever you want and on a man who out of a sudden seems to carry the weight of the world, I had sleepless night until one night my, my wife woke up next to me and realized I was not sleeping. She said, what is it? I said, I don't know if I can handle this film. And she said, <laughs> and it was just more than a wife can do in order to get her husband back to sleep. She said, you rehearsed 50 years for this, so don't worry. And I think looking at this room, I think this goes for a lot of us. We rehearsed a long time to be ready for what's ahead and to be ready to defend the incredible freedom we have with our medium, which is to face the unforeseen. And uh, you're, all, you're all fighters for the unforeseen, and I hope you all stick to it. And I'm very proud to be here in your company as the modest German ambassador. Thank you. Thank you.